Hey, what is up? My name is Matt Workman. These are Unreal Engine glasses. That's why I wore them. Uh, today, I am kind of unofficially starting, maybe officially, starting the virtual production vlog season two. So season one, I transformed my basement into a virtual production testing stage and I installed Steam VR tracking hardware. I got these green screens over time and I did some camera tracking and some mocap and whatnot. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. What is new for season two right now? Why am I sitting in front of this 60 Mark II again in here? Well, I have a really big upgrade to this studio that really changes like everything. So we've gone from kind of like the indie prosumer approach and jumped all the way to the end game basically, which you can see up here a little bit to the kind of uber high end of tracking equipment. So I have right now installed in this space a full Vicon optical mocap system. So when you're seeing mocap from behind the scenes of games and movies, almost always when there's the little marker dots on everybody, they're almost always Vicon. They're like the Ari of like the tracking world and specifically for performance capture. And some recent examples of projects that you might've seen Vicon on are the Fox reality TV show with like, um, the different colored people who are singing uh, Alter Ego. Uh, that is a Vicon show and most of it's live uh, mocap, I'm pretty sure. And then another pretty recent example that's in like the, you know, the mainstream, you know, zeitgeist is the ABBA virtual avatars, if you've seen that. I think they made them in like their, their younger selves in 3D. This is like an ILM produced it project. And then of course they did motion capture with them and they did like a virtual concert. That was also Vicon. Now, what might be even more interesting to people following this channel, the filmmakers, the camera people, the DPs, is that not only is Vicon used for performance capture, so like climbing around in mocap suits, that might not be for everybody. Uh, Vicon is also the primary go-to for high-end camera tracking when you're doing LED wall virtual production. So I believe the second and third season of Mandalorian are Vicon uh, and like, a lot of the Unreal Engine stages or the Epic Games stages, the one in London, and a lot of like just the really big LED walls that you'll see like the huge cylinders with the ceilings and whatnot, to get like the best camera tracking, they're pretty much all Vicon as well. Cause Vicon, as you'll see, they're just really good at tracking things in general. So unfortunately I've kind of filmed this vlog out of order. Um, I would have liked to film it linearly and edit linearly, but basically it's already set up and I've done my first initial tests with it. But to start, uh, I'm gonna kind of rewind back the clock and show me unboxing the system and then going through like the basic install. <laughs> Okay, so we have unboxed the Vicon system and we have 10 of these Vicon uh, Vero cameras here. These are their smaller ones. They have ones called Vantage and they're like, like twice as big. They're a little bit taller, but these are gonna work really well in our kind of like low height, like indie studio. This is like, they're just, they're smaller. And so the thing that I have to work on next is how am I gonna get these mounted onto the ceiling? I am using these impact scissor mount for drop ceiling. I bought 10 of these from Amazon for my 10 cameras. Pretty nice. And then the other one, the other thing that completes this is this Camvate, uh, I don't know, what's, what are they calling this? Light stand, uh, so there's like, you know, a quick version of it. So it would hang like that uh, from the drop ceiling. I think it's overall pretty good. If you can gauge how much this weighs from this, it's not very much. And welcome to 2018 where we vlog like this. Uh, I have put my 10 Vero cameras onto the ceiling. 
this is the best way I can think of showing it right now. Uh, my space has a couple issues in it, mostly that this wall here where there's the staircase and then this beam here, they stop it from being like a perfectly open rectangle, but I've done my best. Um, this is my first attempt at getting the cameras so that they have the best view of down there, this X. This is what I'm gonna be calling the origin. I have mounted all of my cameras. I don't know if they're in the best place, but it was my best guess. And you know, as I go through the calibration and setup, I have to go in like focus and iris and zoom each one of these cameras. There's 10, so it's gonna take a while. So the next step, however, is like, how do you power those? So if they were Steam VR base stations, you would put power into the back of them with like your normal like AC adapter thing and each one would have its own power bank. That would be terrible. <laughs> I've set up this studio that way before. Luckily these things use power over ethernet. So all we have to do is use this gigantic uh, deck link power over ethernet switch and just plug in normal internet ethernet cables into each one. Okay, so mid install update here. I have this camera, that one, that one and that one. I don't know if you can see it. I'll try to walk a little closer to it, but I basically have like an ethernet cable going all the way around. What a random way to film this. This is how it's going down. So now there's two cables, then there's three, and then there's four, and then it woo, goes all the way over here. This is, this is exciting stuff, right? Okay, so again, the waterfall comes all the way down to boom right here and here is a whole bunch of cables this is only four of ten <laughs> so only four of the cameras into this extremely extremely noisy uh power over ethernet switch so that's what i've been working on it took a long time i'm kind of tired actually um but i have well like, i have six more of these these ones are really close so it's not a problem it's the further ones and luckily we have tons of slack left because this super loud. It's going to end up going in this room behind this door. But uh, that's the update. I'm going to thread the rest of these now. Okay, so at this point in the video, we should have all the cameras are installed. They're all plugged in and I'm staring at like a massive thing of wires going into this switch, but everything's up and running. I have Shogun, which is the software you use installed, and I've done a couple tests. And uh, I am really, really, really impressed with this system. Like, I have done a decent amount of mocap with other hardware, with animating and, and whatnot, and just to see how stable and accurate the animation comes in onto the metahuman, like hopefully you've seen in this, in this video so far, it's, it is like, it's like what you'd expect. I think it's like what most people think of when you're like, oh, I put on some sort of mocap suit and I, I jump around and, and, and the 3D character is gonna do what I do. Well, it turns out that's, that's pretty hard to get to that point. Uh, and it does require the right hardware. Uh, if you're using inertial suits, it's usually kind of like you get like 70, 80% of it sometimes uh, of the way there. And then you have to do some like post-processing. Some of the softwares have like auto cleanup. And then there's usually like a decent amount of like manual keyframing cleanup before it looks like what basically Vicon looks like live out of the gate. I did a, uh, not like a poor job, but like this was like my first time calibrating all the cameras. I've never placed these cameras before. I've never calibrated them correctly. Um, I didn't even show the calibration process, but like, it's my first time, right? And the first time I do anything, it's, it's usually pretty bad. Um, there's a whole methodology about how you put the markers on your body. I did it and like, I couldn't even see where they're going. Like, I, like it, I'm trying to say like, I've done like a, a kind of sloppy first pass amateur job of setting this all up and the results are still, really good. So I could just imagine if I like, you know, if I go back and calibrate everything even better, do a better job with the markers, do a better job with the retarget, then it just gets better and better. But even at like this kind of like amateur, basically my input, my user, <laughs> the, the part I'm contributing to this, even with it being pretty bad. And I've only done this for like, I've only done this for like three days now, literally, it looks really good. And I am going to be using that data and uh, yeah. Really impressed and very motivated to keep going. This install of this hardware has really like got me back into like 
virtual production stuff. I've been in game dev world for a while and I'm still in VTuber world a little bit as well. But uh, I'm very interested to take this as far as it can go with performance capture. Like I haven't done hands yet. There's a whole bunch of different optical ways of doing hands that we're gonna try out. I might try them with my stretch sense gloves. I've got different helmet systems for capturing the face and there's, we can track props. Like I wanna track chairs, track like, track like swords and guns and stuff like that. I'm probably not gonna get a second person in this volume anytime soon. It might be a little bit small too. Still just like, COVID, I, I just, I'm, I'm not there yet. Ho hopefully by like, you know, sometime next year, I would love to do this. Maybe bring this like a bigger space or something like that. But I, I'm just really excited to kind of be producing this and sharing it. And, uh, you know, I think my, my closing thoughts that I want to say about, uh, you know, Vicon and Optical is that like, it's not indie. Most people are not going to go buy a full optical system. Like there's a capital investment that's kind of high. And especially if you're still just like learning it, that's that's just probably not going to happen. That being said, people do buy Alexas uh, before perhaps they have the full business model to do anything with it. But, you know, I think what's important is to see the results, you know, it, it see that it can be operated and set up by like, you know, uh, I kind of know what I'm doing, but I'm pretty much an amateur at this. I set this up by myself. Uh, I, I put the markers on myself. I turn it on myself. I retargeted it well, with help, but myself, I run the Unreal Engine part. I'm pretty good at Unreal Engine though. And like, it's doable, you know, one person could do it. Uh, two people could definitely do it. And if you wanna like kinda just jump to the end game of like, okay, I just really need this like mocap to look like perfect or as good as it possibly can out of the gate, like live for VTubing and just like maybe you're more of a filmmaker, less of an animator, it's this. It is this. And I will just continue to show like uh, how this works and just, I don't know, I, I am, I'm very excited about it. And maybe as, as time goes on, I do, I do need some more hardware before I can do like perfect camera tracking with it. Like you need like a sync box and then like a time code generator and all the virtual production, like engineering stuff that I don't have currently set up right now. But I put the green screen back up. It was down for a little while. So uh, I hope that like later this year, maybe next year, uh, I can get into the camera tracking side of it too, which is more relevant to like the cinematographers and filmmakers for doing green screen tracking and for doing uh, LED wall, which I don't have an LED wall sadly right now. Um, and then for like the even more advanced people that are like, oh, we've already done all that, like doing XR, which would be live compositing or AR, basically compositing like 3D characters into it, into the track space. Uh, Vicon has a really cool way of the way that they calibrate stuff, which you haven't seen the wand yet. I'll, I'll do a whole, I'll do more detailed videos on this uh, in the future. Um, basically when you calibrate this system, it is also able to calibrate lenses and sensors, kind of like, kind of the missing part of what Vive tracking doesn't have. This, this system just does that naturally. So you get ST maps and like really nice uh, distortion mapping for your camera tracking that goes right into Unreal Engine. It's like really easy from what I've seen. So you just get like perfect camera tracking and it's fast. It's like really tight. There's like no delay. It looks, it looks nice. I haven't set it up myself. So thanks so much for watching this first episode of season two. Let me know in the comments below what would you like to see me do with this Vicon system? I've got all sorts of ideas, but I'm also interested to hear what other people want to know about it. I don't really know. I'm going to go ask Vicon. They'll tell me, and then maybe I'll tell you. That's kind of how this stuff usually works out. Um, and uh, yeah, look forward to the, the next video with this. Uh, I think next my goal is to have the finger solvers. There's a bunch of different ways of doing fingers. And then also speaking. So I got to get my audio all set up and do like some, some scenes. Maybe where I puppet like, you know, two different people, and then I film them in Unreal Engine 4.27. We do this all in 4.27. That's kind of like the next thing for like the, the cinematic side of what I'm doing. And the Citizen Meta 1 side, that's just going to be completely experimental, weird VTuber stuff. So that'll be happening over there. Okay, that's really the end. I'll uh, see you on the next video.